Hi, John Twist, University Motors. We are so close to being open. We're looking forward to our big opening party on Saturday, April 2nd. And shortly after that, two weeks after that, I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. If you're interested in attending that seminar, contact Wade Alexander of the Washington, D.C. MG Car Club. We're going to do a tune-up on one day and a, a complete tune one day and a complete lubrication the next. And his shop is uh, within the roaring distance, as we are from the Grand Rapids Airport. He's right, uh, right next to Dulles International. So if you're interested in attending, if you're from Virginia or the D.C. area, please, you know, come on out to Philadelphia. It isn't that, that far away. Hey, we're making lots of progress. Come on. Well, let me show you. We've got our, our reception area um, pretty set to, to go. We've got our cabinets uh, all polished up and, and so forth. We've got another cabinet back here. All this old world, old world wooden, uh, wooden cabinetry and, and so forth. We have yet to get a light in here so we can see what we're doing. But step by step, I know that we'll get there. Let's go out in the shop and show you what's going on out here. People are already calling. I'm already starting to make some uh, appointments uh, for the uh, for the weeks immediately following the second. So we've got a wall up here now. This is our machine shop. Right now it's painted in uh, spam. 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 Yeah, it's painted in spam right now. I. Uh, I'll tell you, when you go to the paint store and order paint, always double check the color that you're going to get because I accidentally ordered this. So we're using it as an undercoat, a base coat. Um, I don't know who else would use this color. It's uh, pretty fleshy for, for me. Anyway, pretty soon, uh, tomorrow, we'll, we'll go ahead and get this white. And, um, and then we're gonna, we've got our saw and we've got our our vibratory tumbler and our sandblaster and all the big shop equipment that's going to go in here where it's, where it's going to be relatively dirty. We'll be able to keep the, the rest of the shop clean. Had a guy call me today about an MGB gearbox. Let's go over and look at that and uh, uh, so I can show him uh, and everybody else too why it falls out of third gear. It's not uncommon. I mean, it's, it's not rare. Uh, for an MGB all synchro gearbox 68 through 80 to fall out of third gear on a light deceleration When you go to put it into third gear the third third gear is If I can get third gear third gear is farther from the center line of the gear selector than either first second third goes a long way forward or fourth when you buy a, a, a um, a leather boot and put it around here and have it snug sometimes when you go to put it into third gear it doesn't go all the way in it goes most of the way in but that leather boot is always tugging tugging back on this and in periods of deceleration it can kick out a gear so if the, if your gearbox is kicking out a third first of all take the gear shift boot loose and see if you can if you can duplicate the problem with it being loose. If you can't, then figure out how to make the gear shift boot looser where it's attached. Next, um, the shifter rod, it's very difficult to, to see. Um, um, down in, in here, I want to say that the, the, uh, the shifter rod underneath this bolt which is the shaft which controls this guy here. Underneath this bolt is a spring and a ball, or sometimes a spring, a column, and a, and a ball, a plunger. And if you take this out and, and insert on top of the spring two, one or two, number eight helical lock washers bent straight, they'll act as shims and they'll push harder and it'll, it, it'll increase the tension on the, on the detent spring. Well, let's take a look down here and see what's really go, going on. Here, we're engaged in, th we've, we, we're pretty well engaged in, in third gear. See how our sliding hub f 
falls o over these little tiny engagement teeth here. Okay, that's that's pretty good engagement. If the main shaft sits too far to the rear, because there aren't enough shims at the back of, of the gearbox in front of the rear bearing, if the whole back here there's some shims, and and if there are not enough shims then the whole main shaft sits too far back. And if it sits too far back, then no matter how, how hard you push this into third, this sliding hub won't completely cover the engagement teeth. So it's very difficult to tell, but we can see see the distance between our, our sliding hub and the, and the face of the gear. That, that comes up pretty, pretty close. Let's try it in first gear, see if that comes up real close. I mean, we're dealing with a sixteenth of an inch less than that. And now let's go up into third gear. Ooh, look, it's further away. And in fourth gear, it's uh, it's also further away. So it, it's hard to hard to tell if that's a a good comparison. But the main problem is that this whole main shaft assembly sits too far back, and you can't fix that without taking the whole <laughs> without taking the engine out, without taking the gearbox out, and going going for it. But a short measure is to is to strengthen up the the detent plunger, or to take care of the gear shift boot. Hey, in the future here, I, I hope to I hope to return to the days when we're going to have more technical videos. They're lots of fun. I really enjoy doing them, um, and everyone here is getting pretty burnt out on building buildings. Uh, it's been, we were just concluding five months of building this place. It's the Taj Mahal of MG shops, but we all want to get back to tuning SU carburetors, which is, uh, which is what we're supposed to be doing. Hey, we we'll look forward to seeing everybody uh, next week, Tuesday on, on video, or, uh, um, or maybe uh, if you can make it on the uh, 2nd of April here on Saturday, noon to four. See ya.